in the last video we were tuning P and D to find our P and D ratio as UAV uh, tech calls it and he's got the formula here of course so now in this video we know that ratio so now we're going to fly and we're going to raise speed forward now in this one he says you do it for feel um, speed forward is mostly about feel so you raise it till you are comfortable so that's what I did so we'll look at the first clip as I was flying around I would just do flips rolls that kind of thing and just see how the quad responded to what I was doing and how it felt on the sticks um, was it sharp was it smushy was it sloppy those kind of things what I was looking to feel so I just did this for every flight and then selected the best one. Okay, this is the black box log for the first flight and uh, here I just have the set point and the gyro. So the set point is the green line, the gyro is purple. And basically we just want the gyro to track the set point as best as possible. As you can see this normal flight. Okay, here I'm going to make a left turn. All right, I'm going to well, I'm actually making a 180. But uh, so I'm turning left and you, you see the gyro is following along pretty good. It's it's close to set point. And then once you get into the turn, it follows set point pretty good, and then as you're coming out of the turn, you see it's not tracking as well, but still, it's still tracking pretty good. Um, and then, uh, you know, little give it a little throttle here. It, I guess it needs to catch up for a second. Now here's a roll, a roll to the right. For some reason, I always roll to the right. Anyways. You see the gyro, you know, it's it's tracking along somewhat. And then I get into the roll, it's not tracking. I get to the end of my stick, it's tracking, and then it's off a little bit. So we're going to, right now, the feed forward is set to 100. <laughs> Flight number two, feed forward is at 200, and you see I take off. Gyro's doing a good job of tracking the set point. Um, do a little bit of turning. There's still some separation, but uh, it, I mean it's tracking fairly well. Here we have a left turn, um, maybe more like a 180. Um, gyro's still tracking pretty good, especially in you know. Straightforward flight tracks very well. Turns, it's still tracking, not a whole lot of overshoot, but still some uh, not exactly following perfectly. Here we have a roll again it's to the right. For some reason, I always do that. You can see how the gyro tries to track the set point through this roll. I mean, it looks this part looks about the same as when feed forward was at 100, um, except that at 200. We have this big dip right here. Um, I guess call it overshoot or something. I don't know.
This is what feed forward looks like, set to 250, both pitch and roll. Um, you can see here, everything's at 250. Oh, I'll free off. Um, anyways, just flying along, a slight turn to the right. Um, let's see if we can find uh, some bigger rolls. Here we go. Nice big 180. You can see. This section right here and this section right here, the gyro just isn't tracking the set point at all. Um, you can see it does a pretty bad job through here. Then, you know, as you get the straightforward flight, um, when feed forward was lower, you didn't see as many of these uh, humps through straightforward flight. Um, and following along, but uh, yeah, I mean, you would see them, but just not as many. Okay, um, let's continue through here. Turn to the, let's turn to the left. So like a 180 to the left. Um, again, you can see how the gyro isn't quite tracking as well on the set point as the lower numbers. Um, I guess I didn't do any rolls here. It must not have felt right. I don't know. You can when you're messing with feed forward, you can definitely feel the difference in uh, in your the stick movement. It just there's definitely a feel to it. So let's take a look at this flight again. The feed forward is at 300. Okay, so you can see how it's it's trying to track the set point here um, as you go through. It, uh, you know, it's, in my opinion, it's not doing as good a job as tracking a set point as the lower numbers did. Um, and then I'll also note that during this flight, um, I started to notice some, some bounce back uh, with the feed forward at 300. So... So for this next flight I kept feed forward at 300 and I increased my D for pitch and roll to 50 again. So I increased this and did a flight to see how it went. So let's just take a look at the flight. Um, right now we're just looking at the gyro and set point. So um, you know still it's doing about the same maybe slightly better um, tracking. Uh, but uh, again, the whole thing about tuning feed forward is feel. So, um, you know, I, I don't exactly remember how it felt, but I know because I didn't keep 300 as my feed forward that it just didn't feel right to me. So, you know, here we got some overshoot again. Um, but anyways, uh, this... It's a flight, you know, gyro still kind of, kind of tracking the uh, the set point. Um, I mean, there's a lot more places where it isn't versus it where it is, but um, this might be, eh, eh, I mean, it bounced on the ground. I don't know. Warm. Oh no, no no, I'm getting hot, they're hot, motors are hot. Okay, so let's uh, lower 
speed forward back down to 250. I just happened to check the motor temperature because I increased the D gain from 40 to 50. And that's the only change I made from the previous flight. I checked the temperature. Most of the motors were good. Three of the motors were good, but one of them was extremely hot. So I decided, okay, I need to have my D gain at 50, but I lowered my, three, my uh, feet forward from 300 back down to 250 to uh, check it out and see how, see how that flight went um, as far as the motor temperatures go. <laughs> Look at this flight. Uh, this is feed forward at 250 and my derivative at 50. Um, as you can see, it's, you know, it's tracking better than a 300, I, I think. Um, you know, tracking pretty good along here. You know, still a little bit overshoot every once in a while. And I just got a text message. Damn it, I'm not going to start recording this over again. I'll just keep going. But, anyways. Um, did some 180s, did some hard turns, trying to do some prop wash. Um, all in all, it's an okay flight. Um, huge, huge, uh, well, I think this is where I bounced. Yeah, bounced when I went to land. But anyways, um, then after my flight, I went to go check the motors again to make sure they weren't hot. And I remembered that... Uh, because I increased my D, I needed to increase my P, which I did not. So, uh, let me go back to this document and show you. Uh, UAB Tech says in step number three that you're, you, when you're adjusting your P and D, you're trying to find your P and D ratio. And that you need to keep that ratio. So, no matter what your P, your D gain is, you need to keep the ratio of P and D. For example, in this case he's his original for his his original P was 60, original D was 35, and his ratio was 1.71. Okay. So let's say you get some more prop wash, so you need to increase your P, your D gain to 40. Well that also means you need to increase your P gain. I didn't do that on this flight. My motors are still kind of warm and I've realized, oh, I need to increase my P gain. So I did the math, figure out my ratio, and increased my P gains for pitch and roll so that I could maintain my ratio. To conclude this video of tuning feed forward, um, I what I did is I continued flying, and the best feel I got for feed forward was around 150. Um, so I set the feed forward to 150. Of course, my derivative is at 50. And in order to keep my P and D ratio, I increased the roll P to 77 and the pitch P to 180 or to 82. Um, so I also put my original D from step three, tuning the P and D, um, into uh, the D min for pitch and roll. Uh, then and it flew, it flew pretty good. Um, I'll stop the video right here. Um, this, this is basically how you tune feed forward, and you do your final D. Um, the biggest, the most important thing I would say is, if you make any changes to D, then you need to increase your, you need to adjust your roll and pitch P to maintain your P and D ratio. Um, so uh, with that, I'll just conclude this video. I hope this helps someone out. 
Um, hopefully uh, it's understandable and I didn't go on too long and just blab.